Welcome to the second episode of Workaround, Women Design Action. I'm Helen Norrie from the University of Tasmania and I've got a fantastic panel with me today for Regional Roundup, Bright Ideas from Beyond the Big City. Lindy Atkin, who Lindy and I were in first year at University of Queensland together, so it's fantastic to be joining up with her. Emily and e Lindy teaches at Works in the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Emily Womwell from um, SJB in Sydney, who grew up in Newcastle and is now back working in New Newcastle. Ra Laura Martez um, from Portugal, who is currently living in Melbourne. Emily Taylor. In, from Melbourne, who's um, th the one of the people on the panel who's not actually a designer but a community engagement specialist, which will be great. Um, Kirsten Bauer from Melbourne, who is from Aspect Studio, and that is a Melbourne-based practice, but also a, it's a global practice as well, with offices in lots of places doing interesting work. And um, Mim McGarry, who is from Hobart. So this is us rounding up together. I'm particularly interested in the fact that in Australia there are only five cities with more than a million people. Um, the rest of the settlements in Australia are much smaller. And this is something I find that in Australia a lot of our identity is influenced by university educated people living in cities. There's only five cities um, that have more than a million people and after that it drops down pretty quickly with um, I think uh, six people between 200,000 and, and 600,000. So Hobart is actually the 10th biggest place in Australia. Launceston is the 20th biggest. And then after that, there's literally a myriad of tiny little towns and places. And when you live outside the city, you, there's a whole different experience, really. 60% of Australia's, Australians live in the five largest cities, but 40% do not. And I think that this is a really important thing to remember. Um, so the other thing about regional cities too is that it's not just um, that they're little, they're also often disconnected. There's a, a very interesting view by Paul Collitz who says that on one hand we think of regions, we talk about regions in Australia as one thing, it's like the other, everything that isn't in the city, but actually there's more differences among the regions than there are similarities. In Australia, really, the idea of the region is characterised often by negative stereotypes, that it's either about extreme disasters or resources booms or busts. And there's an idea that regions are cur currently in decline. But actually, at the moment, a lot of regions are growing. And we've seen that in Tasmania in particular, where at the moment, the, um, the boom in, in Hobart is increasing to the point that there's 0.3% rental vacancy rate, which has got to do with a lot of inward migration. Um, but the idea that actually the regions can be understood as four different types of things. Regional cities with more than 50,000 people. Connected lifestyle regions, which is really like the Sunshine Coast where Lindy comes from, where it's not really a city but a series of small towns that just sort of join on to each other. Um, industry service hubs that might have between 15 and 50,000 that are further away from metropolitan centres, but their performance is really keyly linked to that industry, which means that their survival is also connected to that, so it can um, go overnight, as you see often with mining. And then heartland regions, sort of smaller areas that um, are shaped by industry as well. I think it's, it's really important to think about all these things, and interestingly, What's happening in New South Wales and Victoria is there's two mo movements in um, New South Wales, the Evo cities. There's a series of cities that have actually joined together to brand themselves as the Evo cities. So they kind of, it's really a marketing idea of being able to say, um, to pull the power together. But more interestingly in Victoria is the regional cities Victoria in which there's a whole network of cities that it's not just about branding but really working more actively together to understand the regional complementarities. And I think there's often a big discussion about regional competitiveness, this idea that one place needs to fight against the other. But to me, I'm really interested in the way that one place understands itself in relation to the complementary um, relationships between one another. And when you start to look at the fact that we have states in Australia with as many people as countries in other places, you realise that there might be other ways to think about what we are as places and how we're governed. Um, so the fact that Western Australia has collectively as many people as Brisbane um, is interesting. 
and that Queensland has as many people as Melbourne and New Zealand. So to think about some of those things actually just opens up some questions about places in different ways. There was a competition a few years ago for the centenary of Canberra called Capathetical, and it asked the question, if we were to build a new capital for Australia now, what would it be? And it wasn't asking you necessarily to replan Canberra. It was just asking you to rethink what is a capital. So I got together with a bunch of really brilliant graduates who just finished at the University of Tasmania and dreamed about the future and put together a competition entry. Um, and what we were saying is that the capital is something symbolic that represents the character of the nation. And what we were interested in is what is the character. In asking what is the idea, we thought, well, Australia really is a region of regions and that that's something that is one way to think about what the symbolic value of Australia is. 